and I got a sock again in about two hours. I gotta go. So that's the way it goes. So technically nothing has changed, guys. Uh, same counts as yesterday. Another thing Isa is, because Isa is asking me if this can be the whole correction. I don't, I doubt it due to the fact time-wise cannot be. I mean, no way that this is going to be the whole correction of this move. This move, I mean, it needs time. And we've been saying that also same Friday because the idea that the S&P needs to trade lower. And then because the S&P needs to trade lower, the dollar won't get strong, won't get weak with a weak S&P. So technically, that's why this is taking so long. And don't get surprised. I remember Hazar, he put the charge. I, I recommended you guys to follow him to uh, the feed. I mean, this can take longer time. And it can, he can stay around these lows for a while. So the way I like it is because of the S&P, I'm sorry, the RSI, I see on the RSI, I see three ways here, three ways here, like I spring yesterday, right? Three ways here. And the drop, this drop is in three-way move. Look, no divergence. That means that this is W technically. And then you're going to get a B and you're going to get a C lower to an area between 11, uh, 133.40, 132.90. Everyone should be buying the risk. I'm, I mean, I can be wrong. I don't want to say it with an 100% insurance. I can be wrong. But I'm like a, with a higher degree insurance now, that risk is going to be worth it for at least until December 17 area. Uh, at least one more lead higher. I mean, I you know my points and yesterday, on two copper, do not get to $4, $4. You should be buying risk. S&P is going to break 1292, most likely. S&P can even break 1373. So that part, nobody knows for sure, but the 1292 number is, is going to be taken sooner or later in the S&P. On the euro, I like this to go higher there. On the four hour euro, this is what I like. I got to be honest to you guys. This is exactly what I like on the euro. I like it like we are now, I need to correct here a little bit. Let me adjust a little bit. This is B, this is W, then this is A, we are in B. But I like it higher. I can tell you, the euro, don't get surprised. I, the euro can even break the 142.45 level. I mean, I didn't, I didn't think that that was possible last week, but I don't want to say it won't do it now because the S&P reaction from the lows is bullish. And with the S&P bullish, risk is going to be higher. I mean, so keep in, keep in mind that the, Keep in mind that the law that is going to make soon can be a very significant law, something like that, that can last for a while. I like, uh, what I done here, one second. Something like this. I mean, something like this that is going to go higher. This can be one way. The other one is, let me take some labels up. 
So you guys see above. The other one is that this is W, S, and the make, and then it's going to make something like this. I know that A is about the same thing, but something like that, but higher. I like higher risk after three ways back consolidation that should happen sometimes. It's taking place today, but it's taking place on currencies. Uh, the pairs or, or the S&P and copper, it hasn't still started. Don't, this, don't count, like I've been saying since yesterday, don't count in the idea of a bigger or deeper correction in the S&P like we spring yesterday. I mean, uh, like we spring yesterday, uh, the S&P last time around did not make more than 23.6 correction. So I'm ready for the same scenario when the S&P can go higher. That's this, I said right now, I mean, it's better not run before you work. I start thinking about 37.28, most likely in Europe. And then from there, you're going to know the ways they're going to be telling you the degree of the bounce. Look, I was thinking, look at here. This is the last recovery on the euro. If it's going to break 142, we should be some praise around this in some degrees. It's not the same structure, but this, this was, at this stage, this was also very iffy, if you guys remember. Everyone was spreading bad odds. We were spreading a bigger recovery that happened. Everyone was spreading a three-way move, right? So minimum 137.28. If you get to 138, a bonus. If you get to 140, another bonus. If you break here, another bonus. Our plan in any way for Cassie is buying here. I want to get filled with every unit. Guess what? I'm going to take profit at 137.28. I'm going to let the right later run because the euro can go to 144, guys. Don't discount that possibility. I know that many of you don't see it, but that's everyone's choice there. Now, S&P, this is the key of everything. This high is history. This high is gone. So this is gone. This, this one right here is still iffy. Like me and Isa was saying yesterday, when this happened, this is a three-way, you got three backs. You got a clear five-way cut move, move right here. Clear as the water. That's telling me that That's telling me, that's telling me that at least equal legs is going to happen here. Now, if you take, like we mentioned yesterday, the room for the 1373, this move was to the 76.4. When you see three to the 76.4 and three backs, the next three It's about the same, technically. It's about the same, Mohammed. The difference between one and the other. The, the only difference is that the other do not get gaps. This makes gaps. That's the only difference. I mean, in general. So, what like I say, I, I know that the S&P minimum is going to trade about 12, 1293. Now, 1293 is uh, 142.47 in the euro. What's happening is that look how close we are and how weak the euro is. So that's what I say. Don't run before you work. Get in the bullish side at least to make a run to 137, 138. If, if it goes higher and gets on legs, I mean, one is lagging to the other as of right now.
the euro is lagging the risk trade as of right now. So, but it won't be like that forever. There won't be something that happens that make they get together again. So, but S and P is telling me, S and P got easily eighty or hundred more points in it. So, that means that the dollar won't get strong. That's my whole point. The dollar will get strong. Now, the euro question there in the short time frame. This is what you mean, right? Let me put the candle so you guys see it better. Like in a 10 minute chart, this is what it is from the lows. What you got? The way I look at it is I got, there is no gap here, remember guys. You got one, two, three here, four, and five. You see it now, right? There is five swing here. One, two, three, four, five swings. And then he dropped back. Fever wise, you're gonna see that that was Friday afternoon after the market closed. He dropped to 79, which is the 618 of the first leg. And then he dropped again just to the pre-market. from here to the 76.4 and then it makes another swing so you got five swings onto here and then it correct the whole move in three ways to around the 76.4 yeah they always correlated so you got three and you got another three here and then from here I see one two, three, four, and five, almost done. So it can be done as it is. You see it, Jens? It can be done right there. I see five swing and another five swing here. I mean, and then if you put on the RSI, the thing is that this was amazing. There was two candles of 15 minutes on, on a small time frame giving you a 40 and 50 pips in one candle. Now you can, okay, that's good. That's good. Let's wait here for the data to refresh. Look, and then you have a bearish divergency like I've been telling you guys always, when you see this between the C and the A, that's bearish. Now, right here, it looks corrected also, but remember, this is corrective. This drop is in three-way and corrective. So you don't need to be five ways down. He can go down A, B, C, W, now he can go here, go up another three like this then another three and then lower you who knows which form it's gonna take but i like a lower i mean this is a nice place i don't want to send the tray i've been saying you guys because i mean i know it's gonna go higher i know it's bullish so i would rather wait for the for the loan that start chasing the C way here, some degrees on this stage. But the, the euro should drop to at least this area. Yeah, so technically, like I said yesterday, risk or risk pairs should be bought onto copper and S&P break 1292. It will break it. I mean, I don't see another way not to break it. So, any question, guys?
about any pair. Let me show you something then. I gotta switch it. Okay, cable. <sighs> cable is, I mean, put in this way. Sometimes you don't get the clear structure in one pair you get in another. I mean, cable it looks, is eventually complete a cycle here and is correcting this cycle. It went to the 50% of that cycle and bounds. Now the drop to the the drop to the 50% here is in three ways. This drop is in three ways. Right? Let me put it like this. So I would say this, the best scenario for cable is the same with the euro. Now it correct, it went back to the 618 and so. So I would say best scenario from cable is going lower to around 155, 155, 56 and bouncing higher. That's that's what I believe is the best scenario in cable. So that's what I like. I like it higher. I like it higher, but it can make a C way, which is different. It still can do this and higher. So technically that's what I like. That's what I like in cable. That's what I like overall in the whole market. Now, I'll see. This is what I like in cable also. I'll see. What I like in Aussie is. Let me put it like this. I, I speculate a little bit today about the triangle here. Because I see three ways end here, and I see a sideways move. So maybe ours is going to be a strong, and, and I speculate a little bit with the triangle there. All you know is this, and this is what I'm going to do now. To the top, you got a three-way move, but this looks correct also. You agree with that? I speculate with the triangle a little bit. I don't like to speculate because, you know, people trying to create, but this is a well-defined triangle, A, B, C, D, E. Now, I know the high, believe it or not, here, Isa. I know the high here is going to make five away from the lows. That's bullish. And you know my point of view in Aussie. Yeah. People don't get it. I'm going to show you guys the same charge every day until people get it. Yeah, exactly. Even my daughter, she's 11 years old. She doesn't understand a little bit anyway. She can see that this is a bullish. Huh? One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Teddy AO2 here, 2.618 here. And then you got seven swing and correct the move to the downside. So in my opinion, Aussie is bullish, either from current levels or it's making like a triangle here. Then it's going to test here and boss higher. But I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven swing. So it's bullish. There's no reason not to be bullish, Aussie. And that count is the one that makes me wonder if this is the count on the S&P. And people don't like it. Because that goes there 
as a that goes perfect there, Isa. Look. The trust in Aussie, higher than the S and P. While well, you got A B C A, a B, A B C higher. There's nothing wrong with that. To be honest with you, like you and me were saying yesterday. When you see in a correction three ways back after five, that the first leg goes close to the 76.4, I believe I heard someone say, I believe it was TJ, that I believe that 90% of the time, the high is gone with the C-way. So don't get surprised. Like I said, yes, to see S&P about 1373, which is the all-time high announcement. You did it? Yeah. Yeah, maybe we play the triangle. That's for hours, guys. Let me show you something. Any question about any pair, guys? I'm bullish. I'm bullish risk. I'm the only, yeah, I'm the only one in the whole world. I'm bullish risk. On to prove me wrong. Let me show you this. One second. I want to show you here a nice little char. One second. The Euro, S&P. To the LZ. I'm gonna put you all the risk, the risk pairs here, so you guys see how they are performing. Second, okay. Let me see which one is in candle. Hey, New Zealand. Okay, there you go. Look, this is all or most of the risk of the risk pairs. When you see that this day, let me take the dollar out. Look, risk pairs, you see that this day here, everyone created top of a bottom at the Thanksgiving day. You see? Now, look how weak the euro is compared to the rest. This is New Zealand. This is Aussie. This is S&P. You see how the how the euro is la is lagging the rest of them. You see again, it's very weak, very weak right there. Now, not necessarily mean. Look how tight they were, right here. Look, look how tight the trade. The euro was the I mean the New Zealand was the weaker here, but already passed on it. So, we got a clear fight here on the S&P. 
He's telling me that in some degrees can correlate lower. That's what I think. But looking at the past, look, this is an A hour chart. Look how correlated they are because they are a risk pair. You see the same here. Look. They talk about on the same day. And then you see how the S P was the one lagging here. And then what I mean is that sometimes the one that is lagging is like it cashed the rest. Like right here, look, the S&P was strong. But the S&P, the S &P, believe it or no, the S&P is being the bullish one, the stronger one in risk. Together with Aussie. And then there is another one that I don't know if you guys pay attention to it. You guys should, which is let me take one of them out at forty hundred and eight minutes. Let's put the uh, that the Aussie yen. Look. You want to say something? That's the Aussie in here. Look, very well also correlated with the S and P, as you, most of you guys should know. Also showing a possible five-way move with a new high, which is telling me. And I, I, I've been for showing this to you guys for a while. And I want you guys to take a look at the side charge of the weekly Aussie yen. Look, let me open it. Very well, but it looks like this pair is going to break the May high. Because it did a three weeks back here. So let me show you the chart right here for a second. But what I'm trying to do, guys, is open your guys' mind that don't discount, don't discount a, a big move in risk. Don't discount that. I have no bias, so that's what I can say like that. Look. You see, this is the weekly house yen. The best way to count is one, two, three, A, a B, and C, S. Now, I'm having an issue because this S and putting it here or here, this S is the 50% back of this whole move. And then you can switch this C to here and create a flat. The matter that the, the issue is that the decline from here is corrective. Oh, it was a flat S that ended here when you got three, three, and five. The decline from here is corrective, which is telling me that it's bullish. You see a bullish either, right? It's bullish. It's looking for 95. If it's looking for 95, If he's looking for 95, that would mean that the S&P is going to break the high. So, technically, if this is a flat that ended here at the 50 back of this move, exactly, that can get Aussie yen to 95. And Aussie yen to 95 means... Exactly. Means that it can go higher. The S&P can break this. Don't discount. I mean, I don't want to say it because I cannot read the future. All that I can do is play this. This is my this is my bread and butter, guys. Better than the Elio wave. I mean, I can I, I know how to label the wave, but 
what makes the difference between earlier wave forecast and another service is this is the idea that we we use market correlation a lot that many people don't do it and this charge you can labor look the same five and the s p one two three four five with a flat that's bullish and this is another clear move right here and don't discount this taking and all i can say is don't discount euro about 142 don't discount s p taking the 1373 area don't discount it guys like i've been telling my good friend james all over we're fighting a beast the loan dollar are fighting a beast i'm gonna put to you guys i mean don't discount that any and then let's move on to the dollar in one hour The euro is lacking. This is, I don't know if you guys have any other good idea, please. This is the, 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 the count that I like on the dollar index. I like it like this. From the high here, I see one, two, three. You can call it here if you want to. One, two, three, four, and a five. Do not matter. Uh, that do not matter because the three is not the big, is not the smaller one. You can do it like this and play one, two, three, a flat four, and a five. That do not matter. Do not matter like that. You can do it like that. And then this is A, I see three backs, and I play with the feebles. I see, I see three backs here. James, let me know you like this one. I like a three back to the 618 back. And then I see that this swing here ended, corrected, and trust to the downside. And then I see that the low is very well correlated feeble wise to the 1.236 of this whole move. So for me, technically, this is a three-way move that ended here. Now, from here, what you have, you have corrective recovery on the dollar. That's all it matters. That's all it matters. You got one, two, three, one, two, three, another three here. Now, this can be the whole move w the thing is that when the euro makes a new high on sun on friday was right i said yeah on friday yeah when the non fine payroll the dollar did not make a new low and that's in favor of the risk trade why because the recovery from here is choppy corrective and that makes the case for two scenarios the first one a b c w a b c s and then a b c y no matter this high around this area should be 133 on the euro and then lowers but i'm 99.9 percent .9 that this cycle is ended that's why you cannot label the euro in Porsche five ways. You see, these are corrected too, yes, right? This is overlapping, correcting here. I mean, so it's the only way. So that's telling you that this that the highs and the lows that happened last week in risk is going to be broken to the upside. And like I say, don't run before you work, guys, because we tend to we tend to to do that. Go step by step. As of right now, this is what we like. A move to 76.63, 77.20, or even 76. If extended to the downside, 
try to get it here that you are at the beginning. And then this is a Christmas gift. I guarantee you that at least one more high in the euro is going to happen. And at least I see 137. I mean, 137, I see it tradable. From there, let's see how it reacts. I like the idea that in, in that program on Friday, they weren't selling that to sell the risk trade or euro about 137. That means that, mm -hmm, you know what I smell like, right, Isa? That means <laughs> that they're going to be wrong. So this is what I like so far. So far this. I know that three ways down to ideally 76.30 ended the B way of a proposal diagonal. But like I said yesterday, everything depends of S&P. Everything depends of copper. And then copper. also is ending his own move. It's very close, very close to ending the move. Like the S&P, like Aussie. Look, five ways are ready in copper. So copper is going to trade lower. Aussie most likely is going to trade lower. New Zealand is going to trade lower. But guess what? Five ways after a clear tree here, A, B, C, three backs, higher. Until copper do not reach. And guys, I want you, I mean, that's as clear as I, I mean, I can't wait to make my Christmas money. I mean, as clear as the water, three bags, three bags, you got a three here, a three here, you need this, copper to four. When copper get to four, then you start selling the risk. That's clear. Ours is going to trade higher, New Zealand is going to trade higher, everything is going to trade higher, risk trade higher. Europe maybe is the weakest one, do not make a very high around about 142, but you can get to 138, 137, a nice 400 picks for December. That's very possible. Huh? That's what I like. That's what I can tell you guys. That's what I like. You know, James, you see what I mean? That's what I like. <laughs> and this is why, I mean, we've been saying two weeks ago, the decline is correct in copper. It's going to, risk is going to bounce because the decline is correct in copper. That's exactly it. Any question about any pair, guys? Even oil is becoming bullish. You guys see the chart today? Even oil is becoming bullish. Look, oil ending what it looks to be a wedgie that type of oil wedgie, it looks like one, two, three, four, five swing. Momentum divergency on the on the on the highs here is telling me that oil is gonna drop. That's what I know that the dollar short time frame is gonna get strong. But that's an, that's in a one hour. But if you look at the a, a little. Yeah, I need to talk to you. All right, talk to you then later. Okay, this is oil. You got three ways here. Technically, I mean, I'm labeling like A, B, C, W, S, A. Maybe oil is either nesting to the outside or it's on the B way 
from here in a flat and then it can go to this area in some degrees. That can be the case. Phi here, A, B, Z on the C way and then lower in a flat B. You guys see it? I see that the dollar is going to get strong, don't get me wrong, in the short time frame, minimum, it's gonna, but I think that this can be the patterns with oil, A, B, C, and higher to 109. I, I mean, that can be the case. I see, I see oil, oil, copper, S&P, all those pairs, I see it with a very nice five, I mean, a temporary bearish. So we know that a move in favor of the dollar is going to happen, I mean, probably before Wednesday. Not necessary, Isa. Remember last time that the euro was dropping and oil kept hoarding and hoarding and hoarding. Nowadays, oil is being very, I mean, very, I can do the overlay with you if you want to. One second. Hey, it can be, it can be in a triangle. Who knows? Exactly. Most of the time, yes. Let me show you, let me do the overlay for you. No, today, you have to be short euro, not long euro. Then you're going to need to start buying. The, I mean, oil can be doing uh, a triangle is being in the B way now. You know what I mean? Okay, this is Aussie and S&P. Now, let me add you, let me put here oil and euro. Look, again, oil, uh, euro, the weakest of the four. Now, you see how strong oil has been. Look the whole drop on oil here and look the drop on the euro. From here, from here, look, the euro drop, oil dropped. But since this high, what well, it was oil here. Look, you're going lower, oil going higher. I mean, it's not the times around 2006, 2007, that technically you was trading, you was trading oil instead of euro. Remember those times, guys? I don't think it's like that anymore. Look, this is oil, this is euro. Look, if you get back, you're going to see that the correlation was better long back. This is... 2010, the correlation broke a little bit when the crisis. You see, right here they were, were correlated. I remember right here that we used, to, we used to say that we were trading oil instead of euro. Remember, James, around this area? It was amazing. It was like 100% correlation there. The drop. It's still correlated, but look, oil has been going higher from here and the euro dropped. The euro is very weak. Don't get me wrong. The euro is very weak. Like right here, look, oil whore and the euro keep dropping. But the oil can be right here in a type of diagonal. Uh, triangle structure and 
or you can be right there in a triangle B way and allow I see this that okay okay what you mean is that if oil drop that you yeah I know what you mean this isn't the other way around that when the euro drop oil can hold that's what you mean I agree with you it's never in the other way around that when euro goes higher oil drop no that never happened like that so that's why I say who knows the structure that oil is taking here Look, let's put it in one hour. Look, oil higher, euro higher. Lower, lower, higher, higher, lower, higher. Yeah, the one that you say only happened a little bit. Right here, the euro, the blue was about the, 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 the brown one. But do not happen, and I agree with you, do not happen that much. But who knows which structure oil is taking here? Who knows? Maybe this is a triangle in the making, and then it's gonna, or maybe this is a nest, one, two, one, two, higher. I don't like it as a nest. <laughs> I like it better as a flat, but I don't know. I don't see euro breaking the low here because the three-way move right here and the dollar charge, it gives me confidence that the dollar is going to get strong. It's going to get weak soon because that's another thing. If you put the dollar on top on it, look, you can see it there. How the dollar, I play a lot of these correlation games. That's oil and dollar, look. Who's going to say oil higher and the dollar higher? You think, you realize that? Any other question, guys, about any pair? Any question about any pair? Let me see what. Can you just bring the different between WZ correction and ABC correction. Okay, Crifton, can we do that? We usually do on a week. I mean, on the, week, on the weekly basis, we usually take one day and we explain, uh, like I say, we explain an early way is true. So let's do let's do tomorrow. I promise you, let's do tomorrow the double uh, the double six up and the ABC. That okay with you? And we 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 go over thirty minutes explaining those two structures, and and then it's gonna be better because we are already at the end of the seminar. Usually, what we do is at the beginning of the seminar, we spend about twenty to thirty minutes to, talking about an structure. So tomorrow we're going to do the double six out and an ABC. We did the ABC last week, I believe. We're going to do the double six out so you guys understand them before we're covering. But technically, answering your question is, the only way that you know which one is going to get is you have to look at it. Like right now on the euro or the dollar, which is the same, what you can see is, in the case of the dollar, is that you're expecting a move to around 77 because you're correcting this move. You hasn't get there yet, so you know that you're going to get a double trip. 
You know what I mean? Because in the first trip, you didn't get there. So besides that, you see the recovery on the, on the dollar being corrective, and that give you that give you a better hint that that's what is going to happen. You know what I mean? Okay, guys. So let's let's see you guys tomorrow. If there is no more question, let's see you guys tomorrow around the same time. Hope you guys enjoy it. And see you guys tomorrow, guys. Thanks.